every business has a set of documents that they find themselves sending out again and again and again to be signed with very minimal changes made. Things like agreements, consents, standardized contracts. I'm going to show you how you can reuse documents in paper signs so you don't have to start from scratch every single time. And in another video, I'll show you how you can hook that up to paper form to put these kinds of documents on autopilot. So say I've got an agreement which has been sent out to be signed to Jim and I want to send that exact same agreement to somebody else. I can simply click the menu here and click make a copy to copy that document. So this now runs completely separately to Jim's agreement. It's its own document and I might send this to Abby. So I'll do Abby's agreement. And I'll do Abigail Jones and Abigail. All right. I'm going to click next. I can confirm those settings. If I'm happy with them, I can click continue. Now, if this document's set up and it's ready to be signed and it's abstract enough, it doesn't have anything specific to, about Jim in the document, then I can simply click send. And that document will be sent off to be signed. Or I can click continue editing to load the editor. Okay, so here we are in the editor and this document's actually set up pretty well. So we've got a PDF page here, with a text field. Uh, the, our company name is hard coded in. So we don't need to sign this document to enter that information ourselves. Uh, and we have a date field. And then on the second page, which is an editable page, we have a signature field, a text field, a text field, and a date field. Now we might want to make this a little bit more relevant to signers as we send this document out to be signed. So we could start doing that by assigning these text fields to attributes when it makes sense. So because this is an agreement between Abigail's company and my company Paperform, I can simply click Connected Attribute and change that to Company. And then down here again, I can say it's signed by, and perhaps I want to put in Abigail's name there as opposed to just a, a blank text field and on behalf of her company. All right. Now, if I wanted to change these default values of name or company, I can simply click into the signer. And then here in the menu, we can change the name, the email address, the phone, the job title, the company, or we can add our own custom fields as well. Now, say we wanted some of these fields to actually be read-only. So sometimes it's going to make sense to have the person who's submitting the, who's signing this document to answer these questions themselves. But sometimes, say you're putting a price on a document autom automatically, or you or you just won't, won't, don't want people tampering with information that you know to be true, you want this information to be read-only. So instead of using a field, the way we can do that is delete that field and I'm going to click and insert a text block. Okay. Now this text block is exactly the same as this text block where we've written the word paper form. But if we want to tie this to dynamic information about the signer as opposed to something that's hard, hard coded. So we could just put in, you know, pepper farm and that would be hard coded every time we send this document out. The agreement would be between pepper farm and paper form. But that doesn't really abstract away this document into a template in a way that we can reuse it and send it to multiple different parties at the same time. So the way we get around that is if we, if we select this content and we delete it, we can use variables. So variables are entered, like answer piping is entered, entered in paper form if you've used answer piping before. We do curly bracket, curly bracket, and a menu drops down. So now I want to choose the company of Abigail Jones. All right. And you can see this looks a little bit different to a field. This is a read-only value that's going to display the company of the of the person who's signing the form, or who's signing the document. And I can scroll down, and I could potentially do the same thing here. So inside editable pages, we can simply use variables anywhere we would like. So I can open up that variable and do company of Abigail Jones. And there we go, it's on behalf of Pepper Farm. If we wanted to change that value, we can click it and change that to whatever we like. So we might want to call it uh, Foldy Company, Foldy Co, whatever we like. Uh, the other great thing about variables is we also support custom fields. So if we go down to custom fields here, we can go and add things like price, for example for a fee of price. All right, that's missing at the moment, but we could put that in at 395. 
All right. So then when Abby's signing this document, we can have a look. I'll scroll down and get past the agreement. We have an agreement between Foldico and Paperform executed on the date. And you can see that Foldico is not editable and the fee is not editable. These are in line with the rest of the content and Abby is unable to change that information. So next time we want to send out this document to be signed, we can simply go and make a copy. There's another way of doing that as well. We can go to New Document and copy an existing document. And I can choose Abby. So we can skip to the editor and simply change Abby's information. So if we wanted to send this to Philip Pens and we put in Philip's email address and he's the CTO of Blabby and he pays $4.29 and there we go. That's ready to send completely customized to Philip. It's Blabby, Blabby and it's signed by Philip Pens. So that's a quick example of how you can use PaperSign to template out a document and reuse it as many times as you would like. Uh, and in another video, I'll show you how you can connect this to paper form to do all of this automatically on form submission. Thanks.